Hello, English language learners. Hope you're having a great day. We're here to practice English, use and learn English. So what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to look at a uh, blog post, well, part of a blog post uh, from, this is a, a blog called Gardenoid. Uh, and they've got a blog about how to grow chickpeas, as you can uh, see here. We're not going to read through the whole blog, but the point is just to sort of show you, give you some sort of an idea of an, another way that you can practice. So what we're going to do is we're going to read through uh, the beginning of the blog post, uh, and then we're going to prepare, in this particular case, we're going to prepare some questions. And we're going to do two types of questions. We're going to do questions where the answer is in the blog post, and then we're going to do some questions uh, that are outside of the blog post, where you maybe need to uh, get your own ideas and that sort of thing. So what we want you to actually practice is afterwards you find your own blog post, article, story, whatever it is, we want you to find that have a read through it, or as much as you want of it, maybe a part of it, and then create your own questions. So for this, we, we're going to be practicing creating the questions, thinking about different times for questions, uh, and then also, hopefully, for yourself, you can then answer uh, the questions. So let's let's get started, shall we? So uh, I'm going to jump down here. Uh, so here we are. Got uh, how to grow uh, chickpeas: a complete guide. This is from uh, October 2023. Was when this was uh, updated. So let's uh, let's go through. We're going to read through, as I said, not all of it, but just uh, a part of it. So uh, starting off, it's telling us chickpeas are not merely tasty but are also power-packed with protein. These are also called garbanzos and can be grown with minimum cost. Here is a step-by-step, -step, uh, here, here is a step-by-step, -step, I guess here is a step-by-step -step guide. Uh, I guess colloquially you could just say here's a step-by-step -step, because often sometimes I guess we don't use the, the full noun. Um, uh, oh no, no, I guess, you know, I, I, I take that back. So here is a step-by-step -step how to grow chickpeas guide. I didn't read the full sentence. There you go. So that's absolutely great. Uh, that will help in answering many questions related to cultivating these. A fibrous legume, um, chickpeas are healthy and offer many benefits. Chickpeas, uh, sorry, chickpea, chickpeas growing season. I'll say chickpea growing season. Okay, chickpeas growing season is pretty long. Uh, and these grow abundantly in warm places, reaching harvest in 100 days' time. Chickpeas do not need much maintenance except for a few basics. Okay, interesting, interesting. I, I've i never grown chickpeas. Have you grown chickpeas? I've, I've never grown chickpeas. I've, I've not grown too much, actually, I guess, to be honest, but uh, certainly not chickpeas. I've certainly eaten them, but I guess it would be a, an interesting thing to... Um, to grow, and as it says here, is not much, not much work seemingly needed for that. So that's uh, that's great. Uh, okay, so check out the undermentioned steps uh, in growing these yummy legumes. There are the chickpeas, or some chickpeas. Uh, there's a table of contents here uh, with five parts. Uh, we're going to look just at the. Uh, plant the seeds. So plant the seeds. The first and foremost step is growing in growing any crop is to plant its seeds. And the same goes for chickpeas plants. Here we will cover a few basic points that are considered very important. And I guess another thing to think about when you're practicing English, reading aloud some of these stories is good practice as well. I'm not the best reader by any means, but certainly it's a good way of practicing uh, how you're saying things. You can also check your expression, do a recording of um, of you reading uh, on your on your um, phone or something on the voice recorder, and you can see how you sound if it's all monotone or if the uh, there's modulation in your voice and you're emphasizing different things. Some day, sometimes I I can read things well, other times not. Uh, as well. So I guess with everyone, it's a, it's a good thing to, to practice. But okay, so, uh, so here we'll cover a few basic points that are considered very important. As there we have some pots that seem to be sitting in some type of pan with water, I guess, in there, and the, and the soil. Um, they're ready for the chickpeas, I suppose. Um, okay, so start by sowing chickpea 
seeds, so I said chickpea seeds indoors. It's a common fact that chickpeas are delicate. I didn't know that, but apparently that is common. Okay, it's a common fact that chickpeas are delicate and it's best to sow these indoors. That said, I don't have a green thumb. So maybe for people who are do gardening a lot and that sort of stuff, maybe it's a, it's a very common um, thing. So please uh, excuse my uh, lack of knowledge there. And it's best to sow these indoors and not outdoors, where the temperature of the ground can fluctuate to cause damage to the crop. Okay, so that's the, the delicate part, I guess. In case you are planning for an outdoor sowing, uh, then make sure to get the ground covered by a light mulch. This is something I guess you could check. What's mulch? Maybe you can work it out, but it could be worth checking if that's a word that's important for you. Uh, by a light mulch uh, for offering just the right dosage of warmth. Begin planting the seeds at the start of the year as it takes almost 100 days for the chickpeas to reach full harvest. Okay, so we're going to stop there. There's, uh, there's much more uh, of, this, uh, of this blog uh, to read. Um, and I can see you can, we can scan, scan, scan uh, rather, uh, all the way down. And you've got lots and lots of information there, lots of nice vocabulary that you can check. Uh, there's actually to this, uh, to this blog, there's actually is like some quite good sections in here where you can check different pieces of information. So if you're into gardening uh, or if you want to learn gardening vocabulary um, or if you just want to try something different, uh, it might be worth uh, checking out for you. Okay, so we've read uh, the first part of the story. So what I would encourage you to do then is go through different parts um, of the story or just pick out different parts and think, okay, I want to create a question so that maybe one word or a sentence can be the answer or is the answer uh, for that. Now, I've, I've already pre-prepared some questions, but you'll be able to do this uh, for yourself to, to practice. One thing I would try and emphasize is see if you can try and practice different times, different structures when you're doing this. Maybe at the beginning, yes, just uh, follow ones that you're very comfortable with. And as you're growing in confidence, uh, use, uh, I guess, like I say, expanded structures, more complex structures, and that sort of thing. So these are the, the questions. I've titled this Questions Inspired by a Growing Chickpea Blog Post. Okay, so the questions I came up with, and you can see the times that I've used with these, um, and you can, uh, I guess you have a choice with some of these and how you want to um, what tense, what structure you want to use. So the first one is, what is another name for chickpeas? Uh, and again, you can reference, uh, the, um, reference the story and you can see, so like for example here, so we see the answer is, uh, these are also called, these are also called garbanzos and can be grown with minimum cost. Okay, so, so that's clearly the answer. So here I've used another name in the question, uh, but I could also, I guess, ask the question of um, what, um, what, are, uh, what are chickpeas also called? Yeah. Uh, and that sort of thing. I think it's more common to say what's another name for, but you can use the, the vocabulary in the sentence uh, there, but it's a good way then to see if you can use other words uh, although yeah, basically they use other words uh, to to express the same sort of ideas so then people can check their definitions and increase the vocabulary and your vocabulary uh, for that, of course. Now, if you have a partner or someone who you're learning English with and practicing English with, of course, this is the, the time when you can be working with them. You could have a, a blog post or an article each and so on. Second question, are there any nutritional benefits for chickpeas. Uh, here I said four chickpeas, could be uh, eating chickpeas, uh, adding chickpeas to your diet, all sorts of things like that. Uh, again, you can have a look back and you can look for the answers for that. How long will it take uh, chickpeas from planting to harvest? 
So here I use the future because I wanted to practice using uh, will for the future, but I could I also just use present simple. I could say, how long does it take uh, chickpeas uh, to harvest after planting um, or from, from the seed to harvest? There's some different variations. In this case, like I said, I wanted to practice will, but you can also just use present simple. And there are other options uh, that you can use, of course, with these different uh, questions, depending on what you want to practice. Uh, in this case, uh, because I'm using will, the answer probably would be will, but the person obviously could give the answer with present simple as well, depending on the way they want to answer. Uh, is it better to start growing chickpeas indoors or outdoors? So depending on what answer they give, you could then answer, why is that? So why is always a good one to get expanded answers. So you could see question two and question four were closed questions, uh, because in theory, uh, with question two, are there any nutritional benefits for chickpeas? The answer could just be yes or no, but hopefully uh, you can give an expanded answer when you're answering that, because probably more likely you're answering this uh, yourself. Uh, but it's a, a good way to practice having closed questions and then expanding on that. And the easiest uh, one is to think of what's the follow-up question. So for question two, are there any nutritional benefits for chickpeas? Yes. Yes, there are. What are they? And then you go through the list. But then you can practice automatically volunteering that information. With this uh, question four, we've given the the follow-up question straight after it. So why is that? So these first five questions are directly, uh, or answers directly from the blog post. Uh, and then I added three other questions uh, that are outside of the blog post, just to you, for people to use their imagination and so on. What foods would you like to grow if you had the time? This is uh, obviously a conditional structure. Uh, in this case, it's a, a second conditional uh, using the, the older vocabulary, if you like, um, but a second uh, conditional structure. Um, and again, you can ask this in different ways, but this is just, I wanted to practice second conditional, so I use that. And like I encourage you, use whatever structures you want to practice uh, to make it relevant uh, for your study. Uh, number seven here is, uh, did you ever eat any food directly after harvesting? Um, I said, it says after you were a kid, but that's wrong. Not after you were a kid, when you were a kid should be the, should be the question. So did you ever eat any food directly after harvesting when you were a kid? Now, what I'm thinking of here is when I was a kid, sometimes we used to go uh, to places where there would be different sort of fruits or whatever, um, growing on trees or vines and you would pick it and then eat it straight away. Um, there are advantages and disadvantages to that, uh, but uh, yes, we did that sometimes. So this is sort of like a flashback memory for me. Again, it's a closed question, did you ever? Uh, and again, the answer could be a short answer, but obviously we wanna try and encourage you to, to answer that fully. And again, it's good practice, for when you do receive closed questions to try and expand that. You create the question yourself, answer the question yourself, the way to do it. Uh, okay, and the last one here, are you going to try and grow any fruit or veggies, vegetables, uh, this year? Uh, again, so this time I wanted to try and use going to. I wanted to use something talking about uh, plans or intentions for the future uh, for this particular year. Okay. So those are my examples. I would love to hear your examples. If you've got a, a like a blog post that you find, uh, put it into the comments. Let me know, put the, put the link in there and put down some of the, the questions and answers uh, that you've prepared. It's always good to try and practice as much as you can. So with different, um, different resources that you find, if it's um, a TV show, a podcast, an article, a story, whatever it is, Try and do different things um, with it. Sometimes you can prepare and write them down, like here we have with these questions, but sometimes it's just you can ask the questions and think of the questions in the moment. You know, so maybe you're watching a TV show, you know, well, what do you what do you think of that character? 
well, this is a crazy storyline, isn't it? Or whatever it may be. And you can ask those questions you know, in the moment, or you can prepare them, you can uh, write your answers, you can use your voice recorder, all that sort of thing. You can write summaries. There's lots of different things you can do. Today, we're focusing on questions. Hopefully, you do answers as well with them, so you follow it through and so on. So the main thing is don't just listen to this, don't just watch the video, please go and practice English. Just watching isn't going to do much for you, you need to go and practice. Uh, I'm going to put the link for this particular uh, blog post uh, from uh, Gardenoid in the description uh, down below, uh, and I hope you are practicing. Don't forget to like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. We really, really hope to hear from you. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you're practicing English. Take care until the next time. See you later.